Mauritius, a tropical island nation in the Indian Ocean, famous for its white sandy beaches, tropical reefs and diverse wildlife. Its beauty is that from which heaven was fabricated from, or so Mark Twain believed. However, in spite of this natural beauty, the islands of Mauritius, like many other parts of the world, are facing an overarching threat to their biodiversity, the intervention of man. Since the first arrival of humans in the 16th century, intensive logging has taken place on the island, resulting in the degradation and fragmentation of plant life, like the slow-growing ebony tree, Diospyrus egritarum, in Eloi Great's island. The ebony is now a critically endangered species, and has created a gaping ecological niche to appear, causing the entire ecosystem to dysfunction, as the ebony is a keystone species that other forms of life rely on. Despite much conservation and restoration work done in the 1980s, little progress was seen. A big factor driving this decline is the lack of seed dispersal by large frugivorous vertebrates, like giant tortoises. The last giant tortoises to roam the island, Clindrespus tortoises, disappeared in the mid-19th century, and within the same lifetime of some adult ebony's present today. This gave scientists a bright idea. What if we introduced organisms not dissimilar to Glendraspis tortoises to try and fill in this gaping ecological niche, a restorational method known as rewilding? Would this help the regrowth of the ebony population? Tortoises are commonly generalist herbivores that have broad diets and so are likely to consume the ebony fruits, just as the Clindraspis tortoises did. A project was carried out in Elorza Greats to test whether rewilding can be used to help rehabilitate the struggling ecosystem and test whether rewilding is a sustainable method to restore other dysfunctional ecosystems. The aim of the project was to resurrect the ebony population and ecological function using an exotic species, similar to that of previous inhabitants, to aid seed dispersal, as the ebony produces large succulent fruits that cannot be consumed by current vertebrates due to their respective size. The Aldabra giant tortoises are both taxonomically and ecologically similar to the Clindraspis tortoises and were used as a solution to the deprivation of large-bodied frugivores in Ilozai greats. Nineteen tortoises were introduced and free to roam in the island, and by 2009 there were more than 500 dense seedling patches formed across the island. These patches were in areas most commonly used by tortoises, and can only be explained by them as there are no other scatter hoarding or seed catching animals on the island. This showed that the tortoises did help the seed dispersal of the ebony. And in addition to this, the study found that when the tortoises consumed the ebony seeds, it significantly enhanced the germination time of the seeds, which meant that the seedlings grew much faster and were more likely to survive than those that had not. This study was so important because it showed that taxonomic substitutes are a useful restorational tool to resurrect struggling native species and can be applied to other areas of the world where ecosystems are dysfunctioning. The process of rewilding is a very controversial topic in the scientific community, as many scientists say that it's a very risky method and introduced species can potentially decimate the landscape and even become a pest. The Aldabra giant tortoise, however, is excluded from this perilous possibility. Giant tortoises are a low-risk substitute. They move slowly, reproduce slowly and are easy to employ and monitor in this small-scale island project. Whether the tortoise-dispersed ebony seedlings will develop into reproductive adults is yet to be determined, and the effects of the tortoises on other plants and wildlife is consistently being monitored. However, as of yet, no harmful effects have been detected, so this inspires confidence in the long term. If in the case that negative impacts do appear in the long term, it would be very easy to remove the threat by manipulating the population size, density and movement. After all, they're not that fast. In conclusion, despite the controversy of rewilding, the project in Ilozai Great has proved to be successful and shown that introducing non-native species into an environment can help fill an ecological niche and be a sus safe and sustainable restorational method, and inspires confidence to conservation in other areas of the world.